Greetings, Christ United Methodist Church, and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. This is one of the more somber services of the year. It's a service where we uh, get in contact with our mortality. But it isn't only a somber service. Uh, we get in contact with our mortality, but of course the answer to that is the eternal life that we have in Jesus Christ. And so uh, welcome to the service, and I hope that as you uh, experience this service, you will uh, also uh, have a moment where you experience the love of Christ in your life and the assurance of God's uh, spirit with us and eternal life that Jesus offers us. Uh, just, a f uh, just a quick instruction is that uh, uh, hopefully today you have come by the church and received a packet of ashes. And if you have those, we're going to use those later in the service, and we are going to uh, have an imposition of ashes, except we won't be able to do that uh, in person. But you have ashes that you'll be able to put either on your forehead or on your hand, and later in the service we'll give you instructions about how to do that, and we'll do that all together uh, as one body. And so let's worship God together. Please join me in our call to worship. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the Lord is near. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. The night of darkness is upon us. We wait in fear. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Spare your people, O Lord. Heal and prepare us for service. Let your love and healing mercies flood through us, Lord. Amen. Let us join our voices together.
we have an opportunity to continue worshiping God through the giving of these gifts. There will be instructions on your screen of how to do this online, how to do this through text messaging, and of course there's also the U.S. mail that you can do this. Let us pray together. Holy God, we know that when we are in life, we are also in death. And that we know that we come from the dust of the earth, and it is to the dust of the earth that our mortal bodies return. And yet because of your love for us and the eternal life you have secured for us, we do not die. And that we spend an eternity with you in your glory in heaven. And so, Lord, it is with grateful hearts for what you have done for us and secured for us that we offer these gifts in praise to you. So, Lord, we pray that you receive these gifts, that you uh, bless them, and that you sanctify them for your holy purpose. Amen. Our scripture this evening is from the prophet Isaiah, 58th chapter, verses 5 through 12. Is such, is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, the, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring forth up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil... 
if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom shall be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like the spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Until a few days ago, I would have never believed that Lent was anybody's favorite season of the year or favorite season of the Christian year. I could believe Advent maybe or the Christmas season or Easter, but Lent? I'm a part of a group of clergy people online, and our our group was going back and forth and talking to each other, and and this one woman posted, she said, well, Lent is coming up, and it's my favorite season. And my response right now was pretty much the response on, on that particular day. It's like, what? Lent? I mean, that doesn't make sense. And I don't know whether I'm missing something or exactly what it is, but for most of us, myself included, if I'm honest, totally honest, Lent is not my favorite time of the year. This service marks the beginning of Lent, the 40-day period not counting Sundays, starting with Ash Wednesday and ending with Easter. A typical Ash Wednesday service includes the invitation for each person to come forward and have the sign of the cross marked on his or her forehead. And on this particular day, millions of Christians around the world have done just that. And the practice of, of the ashes has, has an ancient history. It goes back to actually to the, some markings of it go back to the third chapter of Genesis. Christians have been using ashes since the second century, and it became a widespread practice among Christian people by the 5th century. It sets the believer on a somber journey, a time of self-examination of, and of repentance. It's a time to wait upon and prepare for the renewal given to us by God's Spirit and in the death and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And yes, we're reminded that we, like the palm branches that have been burned, are will someday return to dust. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you will return. We're reminded that our lives have limits, that our lives will come to an end, and and to be honest, we will all someday die. The ashes are imposed, the imposition of ashes, they're placed on the forehead or maybe the palm, and they're, they're... their ashes are, 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 are done in the sign of the cross. And the cross of ashes reminds us of our human sin and how it results in injustice. And, and that is, unfortunately, a part of life. The ashes remind us that Jesus was innocent and yet abused and tortured and executed. We're reminded that Our human mortality and sin binds us and keeps us from being totally obedient to God. We're encouraged to fast and to separate ourselves from all those attitudes and actions that would drive a wedge between us and God, and we're we're encouraged to embrace those things which bring us closer to God. Our text from Isaiah talks about what makes true worship. It uses the context of fasting, and that is of denying yourself something so that you can come to know God better. Jesus used Isaiah, in particularly chapter 58, a lot in his conversations when he was explaining to his disciples and explaining to you and me what makes for, for our lives to please God. In the verses we just read, Isaiah contrasts 
true and false worship. He, he contrasts those genuine expressions of, of trust and awe and respect with hypocritical worship. And I would remind you that the word hypocritical comes from a root word which means to be an actor, to pretend to be something and to do something that's not really you. The prophet describes this contrast between true worship and, and false worship by describing the oppressive practices of, of pious people. In verse, if you start just a few verses before where I started reading, if you start at chapter or verse two in chapter 58, and I'm, I'm going to read that. I want to read it from the message Bible. But starting at verse two, it, it says, they're busy, busy, busy at worship and love studying all about me. They, to all appearances, they're a nation of, of right living people, law abiding, God honoring. They ask me, what's the right thing to do? And love having me on their side. But they also complain. Why do we fast and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here's why. The bottom line of your fast days is profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time, you're, you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. The, king, the kind of fasting you do won't get your prayers off the ground. Do you think this is the fast day I'm after? A day to show off humility, to put on a pious long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting? Fast day that I, God, would like? Well, obviously the answer is no. In Jesus' time, no, no group personified and, and demonstrated this, this kind of attitude and this kind of separateness and this kind of, of piety than the Pharisees did. No group in Jesus' time was more concerned about holiness and purity than, than the Pharisees. And they had good intentions. Their intentions were to maintain the holiness of the people in the midst of a, a foreign occupation. And yet Jesus time and time again critiques their grandstanding public piety. He challenged their definition of what is pure and what is holy. Jesus condemns the outward practices that mask arrogant, unaccepting hearts. Jesus says to us that doing the right thing by itself is, is not sufficient. What God wants, what Christ wants, it's for you and I to do the right thing and have that right action matched by right motives, motives that honor God. At the very outset of his ministry, Jesus was tempted by Satan to say yes to the chance of using his gifts for immediate gratification of his, his needs. He was hungry. He was thirsty. At the outset, Jesus was tempted to, to have the enjoyment of material wealth and, and the thrill of power over other folks. And, but Jesus said, no, that's not right. That's not who I am. He turned, he said no to all of those things. And he spent his rest of his life, his ministry, journeying from town to town, village to village, saying yes to very long days and very long nights of, of healing and, and teaching and feeding and, and casting out all that is evil. During Lent, maybe we should listen and model ourselves after the prophet's words and after Jesus' words. During Lent, we Christians are called to say no to any habit that comes between us and God. But we're also called to say yes. When we answer Christ's call to say no to destructive practices and anything that would disconnect us, our actions and our motives, we're also called to say yes. Christ gives us the means of grace to, to overcome 
that which would separate us from others. John Wesley talked about means of grace. Those practices that are matched of where behavior is matched by right attitude and right motive and, and the, how those means of grace are given to us by God and then when we t take part of them and, and bring them into our lives that we are changed and transformed people. Means of grace include prayer, genuine prayer, the searching of scriptures, not to find a verse and a, that, that we like, that we can go with, but to hear through the Holy Spirit what God would have us hear. Means of grace includes fasting. That is separate, that is taking something that keeps us from God's grace and God's presence and, and learning how to mold it and change it. Most of the time when we think about fasting, we think about giving something up. And, and when I was a younger person, that was the, the thing to do for Lent. We were all kind of proud when we were able to say to somebody, well, I gave up chocolate for Lent or I gave up the, uh, some soft drinks for Lent not realizing how not quite accurate that was. How by being proud and full of ourselves that we were doing something, we were giving something up for Lent, we were, we were not, we were not being the kind of, of, of disciple that the prophet talks about, that Jesus talks about. Means of grace include acts of kindness aimed at, at justice. Means of grace are, mean regular attendance at worship and, and regular opportunities of service. The prophet says when, when, when we find ourselves matching the, our behavior with the right motives, we come closer to God. We come closer to Christ. When we do that, the prophet says your righteousness will pave your way and the God of glory will secure your passage. Here in a little bit, we're going to put ashes on our forehead or maybe on our, on our palm, on our hand. And the cross of ashes on our skin is, is our way of saying yes to the kind of Lent that Jesus desires for his disciples. You see, the true worship brings us closer to God, closer to Christ. True worship is, is not about self-interest because true worship and self-interest and and self-congratulatory uh, actions are, they just don't mix. They just don't mix. You see, Jesus wants us to accompany him and, and do it boldly and, and proudly, and yet to know where our place is, to know that our, our heart and our, our behavior need to match. They need to glorify Jesus and all that we say and do it and saying yes to that which would fill our hearts and our actions and with love for Christ and love for God and for love for honor others is what Lent is really about whether Lent is your favorite time of the Christian year or not really isn't so much the focus it's really not what this season should be the focus is does our worship does our desire for God in our lives match what we publicly do and say? Is there congruence? Is there a connection? The kind of Lent that Jesus desires for us is the kind that prepares our hearts for a Savior who rises from the ashes of death and of injustice to bring a new life of justice and joy, not only to us, but to all whom we love. The new life begins on this day continues forever. If you would join with me in, in just a, an attitude of reception, if you would quiet your hearts and your spirits as we receive this invitation to the observance of, of Lenten discipline. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it, came, it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and, and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the participation in the life of the church. 
In this way, the whole congregation was, was reminded of the mercy and the forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by the reading and meditating upon God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before our Creator and Redeemer. In the Psalms is this prayer of, of giving back, this prayer of knowing who you are as a sinner. Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly, with my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. May the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we return from wickedness and life and live. Accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit in newness of life. Amen. We have prepared ourselves for the reception of ashes as we have confessed our sins together before God in the same manner that David had gone into the temple to confess his sins before God. And so I would invite you that the ashes that you have at home, if you would uh, take those ashes and if you would hold them in your hand as we consecrate these ashes together. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be a sign of our mortality and penitence, and so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're not able to be together to receive the imposition of ashes, and so we will do that here, and obviously you will do that at home. And we are not going to impose the ashes on each other. We are each going to do it uh, to ourselves so that we don't break that six-foot barrier. And uh, we're going to do this together. So if you're at home by yourself, then you would just put your thumb in the ashes, and then you could... Uh, make the sign of that on your forehead or perhaps on the back of your hand. And, and we will do the sign of the cross as David has reminded us that, that is a, a, the cross is a symbol of uh, the sacrifice that Christ has made for us for our sins. And so we will do that in the form of a cross. Um, if there is someone with you at home, uh, perhaps you will do that one at a time. One of you would impose the ashes on the other and then you could uh, exchange ashes and they could impose that on you again on your forehead or on your hand um, here we are going to do this together and as we do this hear these words as you make the sign on your forehead or on your hand repent and believe in the gospel amen let's pray together Holy God, we give thanks for this that you have done for us, that as we face our mortality and know that it is from ashes where we've come and ashes to where we will go, we know that that is not the final word and that you have secured for us eternal life. Lord, let these ashes remind us of our sin and let us remind us of the eternal life that we have in you. Amen. Thank you.
I will sing, I will sing, while millions join the theme, I will sing. Now, May the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, bless you, protect you, remain with you always. Amen.